All right, what is up guys? It is Dalen here from MA Performance. Once again, I have Kyle with me here. Uh, kind of just somebody to back up some of the knowledge on what I don't have, things that he went to school, he did like a schooling thing to learn about all this stuff. I've just kind of self-taught. Today we're gonna talk about gearing 101. So just the basics behind what does a gear do? So obviously in your vehicle, there's multiple places that could have gears. The main one that we're gonna kind of, main two we're gonna focus on today is gonna be your transmission and your rear differential or front differential or just differential in general. Um, so what are gears? That's a gear. So it's basically gonna connect two points, two, usually two shafts or a multitude of shafts. So in transmission, it's gonna connect one shaft, another shaft, they're gonna spin at different speeds. Gears are gonna connect those two shafts. In a differential, you're gonna connect the input shaft from the like differential to the wheels. Today, what we have in front of us is we have some gears out of one of our SI transmissions. Basic of gears is they're gonna be, uh, inside the transmission, you're gonna have an input shaft side and you're gonna have kind of the output shaft side of the gearing set for the most part. And you're gonna have the input shaft and then you'll have a gear stack. And each of that stack is gonna have kind of different ratios on it. And that's kind of a, a simple way to jump into gear ratio and what that means. So that's gonna mean the teeth on one gear in comparison to the teeth on the other it's, gear. It's the relation between the two gears of, of either being underdriven or overdriven. Exactly, so with that, in most transmissions, you're gonna have four to six gears uh, in most manual transmissions is what we have in front of us here. Obviously, automatics can go from two to 14 gears in this day and age. And you're gonna have just kind of different gears that connect to different points and can go different speeds. The gear ratio is what determines the speed that that gear can kind of max out at. So either a shaft speed, so you're gonna have a transmission gear set that's gonna max out a certain speed that can go back to the differential and then that's gonna max out at a different speed. Um, I guess to, to even move backwards a little bit, the whole point of having a, a gearbox, of, of having different sets of gears, different ratios is all about torque multiplication. So being able to operate at different speeds and different gears allows you to, you know, first gear has to be a relatively high torque multiplication because you have to overcome gravity or friction to, move. to get the car to move. Whereas when you get into higher speeds, you don't necessarily need that, you know, once you get into a fourth, fifth gear, that's typically when we start to see one-to-one -one ratios. You don't need the multiplication of torque. You're actually looking for speed. Yep. The final drive, why would you change that? What would you do? What would that mean? So like the, yeah, short ratio, long ratio. So short ratio short is gonna- ratio is, is, is a more torque, more, more torque multiplication. So it's a, a faster gears and it's, it's a shorter duration. Or like yep, yeah, it's lower been- Lower top speed, like it's, it's yeah. Yeah, so you're going to have a lower gear set's going to be like a 410. Your input will be much higher than your output. Your yep. input speed will be much higher than your output speed. Yep, exactly. So a struggle to put into words that made sense. So hard. exactly. So you're going to look at like a, a lot of factory vehicles are going to come with, let's say, a, a 310 or a uh, 311 gear set. And if you want faster acceleration, you're going to exactly. go to a 410 or a 473 or a 46 or depending on what you go to. And with that, your uh, top speed is gonna come down. Yep, exactly, but your acceleration is gonna be Exactly. Much so that kind of ties into the last basic point of gear ratios that we kind of wanted to touch on and gearing in general is why would you change a final drive? Um, and this kind of touches on the same reason as to why you'd change transmission gearing, but that's a lot less common for most end users. So I'd say that final drives would be the most common thing to talk about here. So you would change a final drive based on your use case of the car, the power that it makes, transmission gearing, your target top speeds, and kind of where the power band of that car is. So when it comes to final drive, there's there's very, you know, minimal effort needed to change your, you know, range in which the off the vehicle performs yep. well at. Um, you know, we would talk about drag racing. Typically they're gonna have a little bit of a, a lower final drive. They're you know, they still want good acceleration, but they have the power to back it up and they need the mile an hour. So they're gonna go for a little bit lower torque multiplication, more geared towards speed. 3-1 is kind of what you see in a lot of like that's the lowest you're gonna see yep. in most modern applications. And then from the factory, kind of the highest you see in most modern applications is like a a four six. You want to find that power band. You want to keep that car in the power band as long as possible. So I mean, like it's uh, coming from a world of like uh, a lot of like Nissans, like S chassis. You'll see the guys with a little bit lower power or with transmission swaps would go to like a four six or a four nine of the older Frontiers to kind of help keep that car higher up in the power band if it makes a lot less power. Uh, whereas if you make a lot more power, you have a lot more usable range and can go to a lower gear set. 
Um, one of the interesting parts about gear sets too is the ability to kind of carry a spare differential and just swap that in and out much easier. You're not gonna do that with transmissions as much. Uh, and then now what we're seeing in professional drifting, professional road racing, we're seeing a much larger use case of things like quick change differentials. Super so you just have a rear cover, you have a main pinion and drive gear, and then you have gears in the back that you can just pop a cover off, change them out, and change your gear ratio kind of on the fly. And so you can run anywhere from a two, two to one all the way up to a you know six to one gear ratio. It really at that point is packaging. Yep. How, big, how big a gear can you fit in the case? Exactly, and so I think that's kind of a final thing to touch on that we've had some questions come in is like, how does the strength of a gear set get defined? And there's, there's gonna be a huge multiple factors that kind of go into that, but for the most part, size is gonna be the biggest constraint when it comes to strength. So you're gonna see uh, people swapping in larger gear sets. So like, that's why the Ford nine inch is probably one of the most popular uh, applications. So a Ford nine inch or a Ford eight eight is probably the most popular application it's just a physically larger yeah, gear set you're displacing all of the torque over a much larger surface. you're talking about surface area yeah right? you're, you're talking about displacing the load over a much greater surface area. so what we have in front of us is a set of helical cut gears for a road going OEM vehicle transmission. So these are gonna be the quietest, easiest to use, uh, most user friendly gear set. So we can talk about our exact experience with our SI uh, drag race car is that it's a very small gear set inside of a very small case with all very small components geared at lightweight fuel economy. As we started to make a lot more power, we started to actually just shear the teeth right off those gears. Um, and so for us, the next step to make it stronger is gonna be go to a straight cut gear, just because you can put a lot more meat on the gear itself, make it a lot stronger, uh, a much uh, more engagement point. Obviously this, this is a huge 10,000 foot overview of gearing and what all that means and why you would change it. Um, and it's obviously gonna be application specific. So what each person is using the car for is gonna define what gear ratios are gonna be best for that. So the power of the car, the engine, the power band, the turbo, and then what you're gonna do with the car. Um, you know, we've all experienced a car that you feel like first gear is basically useless on the street. That comes down to gear ratio and power usability. So if you guys have any more questions or you wanna see more in-depth talks, so like, do you wanna see us to go more in-depth about transmission gears specifically? Do you want us to see more in-depth about rear end gearing and differentials? What do you guys wanna see us talk about? And what are the questions you have? Let us know that you liked what we talked about, you liked what you learned, you want to hear more, you don't want to hear more, you want us to get off the camera and leave, tell us what you want. Uh, if you have any questions, call in. We have a sales staff here ready to talk to you guys about all of the things we talked about today. They can walk you through and help you make the best decision for the parts you need for your car and your application. Uh, so as always guys, thank you very much for watching. Uh, let us know what you think below and follow the channel, like the video, all that other stuff that I don't know exactly what it's called. Helps us, helps you guys, helps the channel get more viewers and helps us do more cool stuff.